Do not turn away from him or you will fail. So the turning away from God is already failure. No matter how you look at it. You see, you, when you turn away from the Lord, you might be succeeding physically. But in the spiritual realm, you have already failed. It's not that you are failing. You have already failed. Because the spiritual realm does not look at what you have accomplished in the physical realm. The spiritual realm is more concerned of what you have accomplished through your soul. God is not after the amount of money you are spending in this world. Right? Even though when you are spending for the kingdom, God loves it. But God is not after the amount of money you have made for yourself in this kingdom. God is, af is, is worried about what, how many souls your whatever you have received has affected. Does that make sense? Are you following me? So when you leave anything that will give you eternal life and then begin to search for things that will not give you eternal life, there's nothing wrong with going for material things. Get my point. There's nothing what, wrong with going with material things. But if in the quest of searching for material things, you lose your soul, that is the problem. Praise the Lord Jesus. He said, all you that fear the Lord, wait for him to show you his mercy. Do not turn away from him or you will fail. All you that fear the Lord, trust him and you will certainly be rewarded. All you that fear the Lord, look forward to his blessings of mercy and eternal happiness. His blessings, what? His blessings of mercy and eternal happiness. Number 10, please don't be distracted though. Think back to the ancient generation and consider this. Has the Lord ever disappointed anyone who put his hope in him? No one. In fact, God came to a particular place and found out that the whole world was corrupt. But there was one family, one man called Noah that put his hope in the Lord. And because of that, God was, God planned to destroy the whole world. But because of one man, he secured that one man and also made room to save other souls. So whoever that put, see, if there is virus now killing everybody, because your hope is in the Lord, that virus will have no effect in you. Because that's why he says, he said, a thousand shall fall at your side. Ten thousand at your right hand side. He said, they will not come near you. But they are around, but they will not come near you. But only with your eyes, which means you are close to see it happen. But only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked ones. Because that debt is the reward given to the wicked people. For the wages of sin is what? Debt. But those that trust in the Lord, he will preserve them. That's why he said, he said don't, don't talk about now. He said, look at the story of those that are of the old. He said, think back to the ancient generations and consider this. Has the Lord ever disappointed anyone who put his hope in him? Has the Lord ever abandoned anyone who held him in constant reverence? The key word here is constant reverence. Constant reverence. That means to continual respect and fear the Lord. Reverence is not just only to just say, I respect you. Reverence also comes with fear. Praise the Lord Jesus. Has the Lord ever abandoned anyone who held him in constant reverence? Has the Lord ever, you say in constant, the, the emphasis is the constant. Which means that if you are not constant, you might be abandoned. But the one that holds in constant reverence, he said, has the Lord ever ignored anyone who prayed to him? That is why I tell people, when you say that you have prayed and it looks like the Lord has not heard, you have not prayed. Because every prayer has an answer. Let me tell you something. If you are, oh, if you are praying for something and you are making a demand of God for something, there is, um, for example, to help you understand, there is a level you must travel in the spirit concerning a certain answer you want. When you, for example, let's assume that the journey is a journey of 10 kilometers in the spirit realm. And then you journey to three. And then you come and say, Lord, I have not heard from you. You see, the answer, the realm that where that answer dwells is in 10 kilometers. You will stay in that three. Then you begin to pray for other things. Other things you are praying for have their own kilometers. The day you come back to that particular request you are praying for God, he will begin to add other kilometers to the one you have already added based on that particular prayer. Hmm? 
So it's until you get to the 10 kilometer in that particular request you are asking for, then the answer will come. So if it took you five years, it will take God five years to answer it. There was a place that Elijah was meant to hear the voice of the Lord. According, not that he was not in the presence of God, but in, in that contest, there is a place he wanted to go to hear the voice of the Lord. And it took him 40 days to get there. And while he was sleeping, an angel had to come and give him food and say, eat for the place you are going is far. When he got to that place, he heard the voice of the Lord. If he had not gotten to that place, he would not have heard. And that does not mean that the Holy Ghost is not in front of you. Are you, are you getting my point here? It means that whatever request you are asking for God, there is a duration of dimension you have to hit depending on what you are asking for. Except you didn't ask for it and the Lord now brought it to you. That's why whenever you are praying, it's never a waste. Because <laughs> when you are praying, you are making deposit to something that you might not know. Sometime, all of a sudden, an angel, I remember that when I began to follow God, when I fully accepted to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, after my encounter with false prophet and they duped me and everything, I gave up on God. Then when I had an encounter, I woke up that night and I said, Lord, okay, I'm back. Then I remember after a long prayer that I did, an angel came before me and came and gave me a talk. And he, said, he said something. He said, oh, finally you are back now. So I said, yes, I'm back. He said, oh yeah, take this one. Now I'm going to find the rest. And I left. Then I began to have several dreams after certain, after certain months, certain intervals of stuff in the spirit. And I began to, found, I began to find certain things. So the level of your growth physically in the spirit the what you do physically in prayers determine the level of what you can search for in the spirit realm. Because each of them that you have found is an armor to your journey. That's why there is a seeking in God. And there is a searching in God. Because you have to find a tool that you need to engage in that war. If you play video games very well, you find out that when you are, it's been long, I play video game, but if you play video game very well, you find, more especially mission game, you know, most of us are soccer, we play, but mission games. You find out that there is a certain dimension, a, a certain, I don't use dimension for game, but there is a certain layers or chapters you get to, you want to open the door, they say, oh, no, there is a key. And that key, maybe you should have gotten it in the vast, the scene you left. You have to travel back to that scene that you have left and go and find the key. If you don't get that key, you can't pass through that door. That is the same reason why you get to a certain door, it will not open until you find the knowledge. It's not that you have not arrived to the door. You have arrived to the door, but you didn't arrive with the knowledge that is needed to open the door. And then you start shouting. You start shouting, hey, 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 cannot open the door. Until sometimes God might help you. You will not meet a man that by God's grace has master keys. And he opens the door by grace. That does not mean that other doors will open like that for you. Ah. Hmm. 